Good evening, everyone. We will be starting shortly. Uh, we're just going to give people a few, another minute or so to log in. So thank you for your patience. Do you want to go in? All right. Okay. She's heading to his food. Right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, just want to welcome you to the Benning Road Bridges and Transportation Improvement Project virtual public meeting. Thank you so much for joining us and we're going to go ahead and get started. Next slide. So, just wanted to give you all some logistics in terms of how this meeting will be conducted. Uh, my name is Charlotte Duxworth. I'm with the public engagement team on the project. Please note that this is an open meeting and as required by DC code 2578, this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be made available to the public. Um, the video will be placed on the project website at biddingproject.com and also be available on DDOT's YouTube channel as well. The meeting is also being live streamed to DDOT's Facebook page. And if you do not wish to have your voice recorded, please do not ask to speak, but you may enter any questions or comments that you have in the Q&A function, um, which we will go over in just a few minutes. Please know that if you have any technical issues during this meeting, please call this number 202 309-3491. Next slide. So as you all are aware, we're using the WebEx um, platform. And so everyone is currently on mute. Um, you cannot unmute yourself, but we can unmute you during the Q&A portion of the presentation. This helps ensure that the meeting runs smoothly as we're going through um, the project items. We will also talk about the ability to raise your hand if you want to request to speak. And your video camera is also off by default so that we can save bandwidth as we go through um, the project descriptions and the updates. Next slide. So we just talked about the Q&A, so let me just kind of visually give you an idea of where it is. Um, the Q&A function is enabled at the bottom kind of right hand side of your screen, you will click the three dot icon on the bottom um, and you will select Q and A. A new panel will appear where you can type in your question and press enter and it will come to all of all the panelists to make sure that we can get to your question. Um, if you have dialed in by phone, you will use star three 
um, to raise your hand since you will probably not be typing into the Q&A function. Um, also, that Q&A function is available on the mobile app. It's also a three dot icon as well. Um, and you will say you will see Q&A and can type your question if you're using the mobile app. Next slide. So again, the raise hand feature. So if you're using um, the WebEx platform, you can click participants on the bottom right of the window. A new panel will appear um, where you'll see a little hand, a little raise hand. You will click the hand icon to raise your hand and we will be able to take you off mute um, during the Q&A. If you've joined via the web browser or on the mobile app, you will again click the three dot icon and you will select raise hand. If you have dialed in by phone, again, dial star three and the raise hand, um, it will notify us that you want to be taken off of mute to ask your question. Next slide. Um, and so we are, of course, have our wonderful ASL interpreters um, that are here with us this evening. Um, so use the slide bar to adjust the size of your stage window if you need to. Um, so that you can have a broader view um, of the ASL interpreter, and then you can close any of the other open panels as well to adjust your view. Next slide. And so we also have, of course, our Title VI form. You all are probably very familiar with the Title VI form. Um, this is the form that we use to make sure we document any questions or comments you have about the project. This is one of our official ways of documenting. So we encourage you all um, to please send in any comments after the meeting um, through the Title VI form. So here on this screen, you will see the QR code, which you can take a picture of, and the Title VI form will come up on your phone. Um, we also have the link here in this slide. Also, what will happen once the presentation is over and we're finished with the Q&A, you will see a pop-up window and it will take you directly to the Title VI form once this meeting is over. So you can stay on and go through the Title VI form and officially send in your comments um, to DDOT and the project team. So we love for you to um, send that information through so that we can document any other questions you may have. Next slide. Okay, so I am now going to turn this over to Nick Nicholson with Parsons. Um, they are our general engineering consultant on this project. So I'll turn it over to Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Charlotte. And good evening, everyone. Um, as stated, my name is Ronaldo Nick Nicholson. I am the project manager for the Benning Road Bridges and Transportation Improvement Project. I represent uh, Parsons and the general engineering consultant in charge of the design. It's my pleasure to introduce the project team that are here in this virtual environment to uh, assist me in the presentation as well as answering any questions afterwards. Emnet Bianco, she is the project manager with DDOT. David Takor, the project manager, program manager, I'm sorry. He's in charge of uh, DDOT projects in wards seven and eight. Carla Longshore, again with DDOT, James Benton, Derek Snowden, Alberta Paul, and Tanya Paul. Tanya Paul. These are all representatives of DDOT here to assist in today's presentation. Along with me is Brian Pujol. He is my deputy project manager assisting in the design effort and the program project management consultant helping out is Alicia Rowe, uh, who's assisted us with the existing streetcar systems and making sure the extension transitions seamlessly um, to the finished project. Next slide, please. Here's today's agenda, uh, basically a project overview. Uh, we will talk about final design elements as we are now in the final stages of that final design, we have identified some right-of-way impacts, which we will talk about today. Project construction and the project construction impacts. Along with that is a traffic transportation management plan. And we will finish off with a question and answer session 
um, after the presentation. Next slide. Starting our project overview, um, as I stated, we are in the final stages of the final design. Um, we have been working for over a year and maybe um, longer than that. Uh, well, I guess we were asked out in February, but what we wanna to represent today are the improvements to the Benning Road corridor to safely and efficiently accommodate all modes of, of transportation within this corridor. We have done a whole litany of studies culminating with the approval of the environmental assessment in November of 2020 and a FONSI, a finding of no significant impacts um, that had occurred in February of, of, of this year. This FONSI is supported by the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Transit Administration, National Capital Planning Commission, and the National Park Service. The finalization of these documents provides us the approvals needed to advance this design to final design and, and proceed to construction on a, a timely schedule. Next slide, please. The elements of the project consist of bridge rehabilitation and replacement, pedestrian and bicycle safety, as, as well as access improvements in accordance with the federal guidelines and DDOT standards. We have safety and streetscape improvements, including new trees, safety lighting throughout the corridor, and very significantly, we have interchange modifications at the Benning Road DC 295 interchange. These mobility enhancements will allow traffic to distribute within the area, within the Benning Road corridor more efficiently to address some of the reoccurring traffic congestion in the area. We're also adding a center running streetcar extension along Benning Road to the Benning Road Metro Station. And at the Benning Road Metro Station, we will have a transit plaza, which will allow for easy tra transfer between Metro, Metro bus, and the streetcar system. We'll also be rehabilitating two bridges, Kingman Lake Bridge, the Ethel Kennedy Bridge over the Anacostia River, and the complete replacement of the Lorraine Whitback Whitlock Memorial Bridge over DC 295 and CSX Railroad. At this location, we will have a new movements that will provide easy access from Benning Road to DC 295. These enhancements are intended to improve overall mobility again on this and the DC 295 corridor. Along with that, we will also have bicycle and pedestrian improvements stretching along the entire corridor. These improvements are intended to provide safe walkability, trail, shared use, path, and even the cycle track within the corridor uh, at Kingland Island. Next slide, please. Ah, forgot about my stations. The extension of DC streetcar will introduce five new streetcar stops, Kingman Island, 34th Street, 39th Street, 42nd, and the, again, the Benning Road Metro Station. Throughout the project, we have 
look forward and encourage community engagement. Starting with our public meetings in 2014, a series of those in the preliminary design gave us valuable input to advance through the preliminary stages to where we are today with the final design. This being our second virtual project update, it will provide specifics on the final design details of the project. Next slide. Some of the feedback that have we have gathered from these this public engagement and incorporated into the project has included pedestrian safety at the intersections, safe bicycle paths throughout the entire corridor, enhanced transit service, looking at the transitions between Metro bus, Metro rail, and DC streetcar. Improved landscaping along the corridor, maintaining green space, enhancing green space, and as well as addressing reoccurring traffic congestion along the corridor by giving users options in order to get throughout the Benning Road corridor. Further, we have address impacts or anticipated impacts with project construction that we will talk about later in the presentation. Next slide. This is our schedule. As I said, we're finalizing the design. And as we do that, we are working with a preferral of utility companies that have major impacts within the corridor. Like any urban boulevard corridor, Benning Road has utility facilities that provide services throughout that mixed-use corridor. These utilities will require relocation, adjustment, and we plan to start that in the 2022 era to clear the way so construction could begin in 2023. Along that line, we anticipate three years of major highway infrastructure construction to complete the project from a roadway and bridge standpoint, likely in late 2025. The streetcar extension, late 2025, early 2026, and then the certification and commissioning of the streetcar systems making sure the life safety systems are ready to be certified for safety and reliability. That means that we, we anticipate complete completion of the Benning Road bridges and transportation improvement project in the calendar year 2026. Next slide, please. So our final design elements that we'll talk about, again, is the bridge rehabilitation and replacements. The modifications at the DC 295 Benning Road interchange, our intersection improvements, our enhancements for pedestrian, bicycle, and ADA components, as well as our street car stops and our end of land plaza for transit functions. We'll talk about the likely impacts to traffic during construction. And again, um, at that point, we'll open it up for questions. Next slide. We will be rehabilitating the Keeman Lake Bridge as well as the Ethel Kennedy Bridge. By rehabilitation, we mean addressing um, the deterioration of those components and making sure they meet current bridge and DDOT standards. We'll also be including um, embedding rather streetcar tracks in those two bridges. At the Lorraine H. Whitlock Memorial Bridge, that will be a total replacement where we will build a new structure uh, with, new, with a new configuration to provide three additional movements to and from Benning Road to DC 295. 
Along with that, we will expand the bridge to provide pedestrian and shared use bicycle tra uh, trails, an enhancement for public safety, such as street lighting and barrier protected uh, on the paths. The next few slides give you a, a, a few more details uh, showing the sidewalks on the, on the, um, this is the Kingman Island Bridge. No, this is at the Kingman Island Lake. Um, both sides have very protected sidewalks. We will have a shared streetcar tracks with vehicular traffic throughout the corridor. Next slide, please. At Anacostia River, this will be a 14 foot shared use path with eight foot of that being sidewalk. Again, barrier protected. New street lights with LED for uh, a brighter, better illumination. And on the north side, we will also have an eight foot sidewalk. The streetcar again will be have power from the median area as shown by the OCS poles as positioned on this bridge. And finally, the Lorraine H. Whitman Memorial Bridge over DC 295, Kenilworth and CSX will be similar to the Ethel Kennedy Bridge with a 14 foot shared use path but for added protection, we will have an enhanced parapet and fencing over CSX Railroad. Same lighting features. And again, a sidewalk on both sides. This bridge again will not only be, the existing bridge will be demolished, making way for the construction of this bridge the Lorraine H. Whitlock Memorial Bridge to be constructed in phases. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna talk about some of the, the interchange modifications at DC 295. The existing interchange has four movements. Um, these movements vary um, in complexity of being able to negotiate either coming off of northbound DC 295 or headed westbound or entering northbound DC 295, the, the merge lanes underneath um, the existing bridge. What we'll be adding is, is or maintaining is some of the existing movements, eastbound to southbound DC 295, southbound Kenilworth Avenue to westbound Benning Road, as well as eastbound Benning Road to northbound DC 295. Those movements will be improved with better sight distance, and more maneuverability for larger vehicles um, that may be on that corridor. These are freeway connections and we wanna make sure that they have the sight distance to merge in safely, whether you're coming in and out of traffic. Now, two of the movements that will be changed will be the movement from northbound DC 295 to westbound Benning Road. No longer will we have what we call the weave underneath the bridge. And one of the bridges that would go to Kenilworth Avenue will actually be removed. Our intent is to provide continuous and safe multimodal connections to Benning Road. Provide improved local access by now allowing northbound DC 295 to actually come up to a signalized intersection on the bridge and make a left turn, 
Concurrently, we will have access from westbound Benning Road to either northbound or southbound DC 295. Again, from a traffic signal that will also control the access of the streetcar as it goes across the Benning Road Bridge. This replacement of obsolete and, and, and structural deteriorated infrastructure is a main component of this project. But all of the new movements, we see that traffic will be better distributed throughout the community to address the reoccurring congestion that we are accustomed to in the peak hours of the Benning Road DC 295 area. Additionally, we looked at improvement of the access into River Terrace. We will relocate the entrance to Blake, um, providing a longer merge or weave distance for traffic. At the same time, have a control stop to address traffic that is coming off the freeway. Moving this ramp off to aiding place will extend the length of which drivers can merge as well as improve sight distance so that there's better visibility for those potential conflicting drivers. Next slide, please. The next couple of slides so slow shows graphically um, some renderings of the ultimate improvements. This on the Benning Road Bridge, the new bridge over DC 295, shows the shared use path to your right, barrier protected, a shared lane for both DC streetcar and vehicular traffic, as well as the protected fence over the freeway and DC two and um, CSX Railroad. Compare that with the existing structure, similar on northbound DC 295. This graphic shows traffic merging from the bridge to northbound DC 295 with this independent merge lane um, that will come off the bridge and provide access and again, merge distance onto DC 295 northbound. Next slide, please. This slide's two graphics shows the transformation of the existing interchange with the two ramps below to the new configuration that shows the three ramps now connecting up on top of the new st structure with DC streetcar and the removal and additional green space of one of the previous ramp with a relocated ramp providing additional space, visibility, and merge distance as you come from northbound DC, new DC 295, I'm sorry, westbound Benning Road to merge to DC 295. Thank you, next slide. We also have several intersection improvements throughout the corridor. These next few slides will talk about some of the enhancements. We will address driveways to bring those up to current standards. Enhance and separated bicycle and pedestrian facilities a new cycle track at this particular location at Kingman Island, and enhanced visibility and reflectivity crosswalks at pedestrian signals along intersections throughout the corridor. The corridor would also feature refuse areas for pedestrians at the median and at streetcar stops, again, throughout the corridor. Next slide. At Anacostia Avenue, 
where we'll have enhanced connection from the shared use path cycle tracks to the Anacostia Trail. Again, um, a pedestrian island for refuge uh, with enhanced crosswalks, bus stops have been included in our enhancements to make sure there is a smooth transition from any of the walkable trails, sidewalks, to the bus stops along the corridor. Again, this is a multimodal improvement where we look to have smooth transfers between modes. Next slide, please. At 34th Street, we have new crosswalks, uh, new pedestrian islands again, enhanced bus stops to be compatible with those pedestrian and bicycle improvements, and to make sure that that crossing for pedestrians is not maximized but minimized to get across from the north side to the south side of the Benning Road corridor. Next slide, please. At Blaine, we have a unique angled intersection where we have bump outs to again reduce the shorter pedestrian or provide for the shorter pedestrian crossing. We have widened the sidewalks in these areas, but not at the expense of the existing trees. We have made every effort to maintain many of the trees, the existing trees throughout the corridor, but where they have to be replaced, we will provide for those new street trees inside the green space along the corridor. Next slide. Again, our intent is to provide new and improved sidewalks, crosswalks, and shared use paths, cycle tracks throughout the corridor with connections to Kingman Island and across the River Rock Trail and the fields at RFK um, to provide recreational capacity and use for the citizens along the corridor. This slide shows our array of, of pedestrian and bicycle in, improvements. On the north side, we'll have a sidewalk of various width throughout. On the south side, we will feature shared use paths, a cycle track, again, throughout the corridor. In the effort to minimize property impacts, there may be several locations where our 10 foot trail, shared use trail, may reduce only for that property to eight feet. But our goal is to provide bicycle and pedestrian enhancements throughout the corridor. The balance of property impacts and to provide adequate and safe pedestrian and bicycle facilities has been studied throughout the corridor and we really feel we have reached a good balance in what we're providing in this final design. Next slide. As I said, this is an extension of the DC streetcar from the car barn at 26th Street with five new stops culminating at the Benning Road Metro Station. These stops will be typical to those on the H. Benning section, the, the existing section, uh, providing shelters, accessibility at signalized intersection, low le level boarding for ADA compliance. And all of these will feature center island platforms. Next slide. At 26th Street, in recognition of the volume of pedestrian traffic, 
we have installed new crosswalks coming off of Oklahoma Avenue in order for students to get from the south side of the residential communities to the Spingarn educational facilities. These will not be in conflict with the new track shown there from streetcar, although we will maintain the crosswalk at 26th Street, and that will be controlled with a signalized intersection for pedestrians. Next slide, please. Our streetcar stops again will have shared center platforms. This is a typical one where those crossing will be able to enter eastbound and westbound streetcar from the shared center platform. This will be a signalized intersection. We will also have split platforms as shown on 34th Street, where westbound bound, uh, streetcar traffic will enter on the western island, while eastbound streetcar traffic will have its own island on the eastbound side, on the eastern side of the intersection. All will have highly reflective crosswalks to get to these streetcar platforms. Next slide. Culminating at the Benning Road East Capitol Transit Plaza. Previous concepts, we showed this terminus in the meeting based on feedback from our stakeholders as well as concerns for jaywalking and, and folks basically trying to get from Metro to the streetcar, we have developed this final design concept that will feature a walkable plaza for transfers between Metro bus, Metro rail, and the um, streetcar. This walkable plaza will have enhancements for local businesses and be a community place uh, for gathering. One thing to note, we will have one of our substation off 44th Street that will be blended architecturally with the community. This feature is needed um, for the power of the streetcar, but it is our intent to work with the community to make sure again that it blends directly with the community. We see this new upgrade of our design as an improvement in overall circulation for the street network. Again, the connections between Metro rail, Metro bus and streetcar, as well as and improve access to the Metro Kiss and Ride for drop-offs. Next slide, please. In finalizing our design from the 30% stage, in order to tie in grades, reconstruct steps and other improvements may be on private property, we will need temporary construction easements. What these are, are the temporary right to perform construction activities on private property, such as redoing driveways, again, tying in grades, reconstructing steps because of grade changes, and overall, just to improve the accessibility and tie in the Benning Road improvements to those adjacent properties. We see these easements being needed throughout the duration of construction, maybe three years. Compensation for these easements will be in accordance 
with federal highway guidelines. And after the construction is completed, all rights revert back to the property owner. Next slide, please. So our construction timeline is, is as shown. Again, approve the final design in the spring of, of next year, 2022. Start utility relocations, and, and they are major throughout the corridor. Both underground and aerial poles have to be relocated, as well as communication, power conduit, Washington gas, all the utilities have to be adjusted to clear the way such that after procurement in the fall of 2022, our contractor can start meaningful construction in the spring of 2023. We look at the three construction seasons to complete the work with construction being complete in 2026. And as I mentioned before, appropriate safety certifications, commissioning of the systems that will run streetcar to make sure everything is working safely and as designed before revenue will start in 2026. Revenue, start, revenue service will start in 2026. Next slide, please. During construction, there will be plenty of traffic advisories. There'll be weekly construction updates that will be available through our website, through communication, through all social, print, and air media. This will be a major civil infrastructure project, and we wanna make sure the adjacent community as well as commuters are aware of the impacts and changes that will occur. We have developed a traffic management plan to anticipate some of the impacts that will occur during the three years of active construction. Construction updates and advisories, again, will be regular and frequent to make sure everyone has time to plan their activities along the construction corridor. Next slide. We want to make sure that as we maintain traffic for and transit, as well as pedestrian and bicycle safety, that everyone recognizes and obeys our traffic signs, as we will provide access for all modes throughout construction, including accessibility for all ADA compliance needs um, throughout the corridor. Next slide. Our goal, of course, is to maintain safety and minimize, mem <laughs> minimize impacts to both the traveling public as well as the workers doing the work. Everybody needs to get home safely at the end of the day. So that again means obey the traffic signs, pay attention to traffic advisories and alert, and check our, our, our project website as it will give updates and provide information again so you can plan either your commute into work as well as your weekend excursions, wherever they may be. Next slide, please. What these next slides will provide are some of the phasing that we anticipate during construction. The pre-phase will begin next year. As I stated, we, we anticipate major re utility relocation throughout the corridor. This slide is looking towards the east. So the south side is on your right. We see major utility relocations happening to the north side with Washington Gas, Verizon, and Pepco, 
as well as in the medium as we start to prepare the corridor for the contractor. The contractor's first phase, next slide, will start primarily on the southern side. In the first segment from Oklahoma to 36th Street, there'll be work on the two bridges, which is in the median, but there also, as you get closer to 36th Street, over the bridge, be worked to the south side, again, finalizing utility relocation and, and making way for new construction facilities, new biking facilities on that south side, which will continue the East Capitol Street. The second phase will switch to the westbound area, where similar activities will occur. Again, this will be major civil infrastructure construction and the work zones barriers should be obeyed because these are hazardous work zones for those not familiar with them. So please obey the signs. Phase three, we will shift traffic back to the south side as we finalize those improvements again on the bridges, this time the major bridge at Whitlock, Whitlock over DC 295 and CSX Railroad. We anticipate by this time we will complete most of the major construction on the eastern part of the project. Next slide. The final phase will be primarily us completing the station stops throughout the corridor and again our efforts to commission test and obtain the the safe safety officers certification for the improvements for the streetcar improvements next slide please as I mentioned, we develop a transportation management plan. What that plan provides is a plan effort to mitigate the impacts during construction. On a major complex project such as this, with the rehabilitation of bridges, relocation of utilities, a lot of trench work, we wanted to be proactive in planning, providing a plan that we can work with first responders, understand evacuation routes during construction, and most importantly, to provide a, a, a venue, a vehicle, where residents could come to get information on the project. On, on a complex project like this, the awareness of the adjacent residents, businesses, as well as those commuters is very valuable in keeping the project safe to all involved, not just those that may traverse the project as they go from work to and from work and school, but also those that are working on the project that are making all these improvements possible. We wanna make sure they are safe as well. Next slide, please. So these strategies will include our traffic control systems. We will provide access to all businesses throughout. We will consolidate and inform of transit movements, moving bus stops, providing changeable message boards to inform while you're out there doing the site, as well as reducing speed limits during construction to make sure that everyone gets through the corridor safely. And lastly, and I can't emphasize enough, we will provide public information and outreach through all venues, social, air, and print media 
to keep everyone informed, as well as our website. Next slide. Some of our anticipated severe delays will be in the evening rush on westbound Benning. Um, through our studies, we are predicting up to five minutes um, during rush hour, during the first two phases of the project. That's when these lanes will be reduced. As I said, the first phase will be on the eastbound lanes. And our studies show that there could be up to a five minute delay occurring as we complete that phase. Next slide. Similar, as we get into phases three and four, coming off Kenilworth Avenue southbound, we're anticipating major backups um, on DC 295 and Kenilworth Avenue. Um, these are doing mon the morning rush and we will alert as we move into those phases. So commuters coming from Maryland, coming from the northern part of the city can find other modes, other ways to, instead of using this area. That is part of our tra transportation management plan to provide options to avoid some of the major impacts, delays that construction of this type may cause. Next slide. Finally, you can stay connected to the project. Uh, project email, benning.project at dcgov. This is manned by our project communication staff. You may contact the project manager, Emnet Banco. Her email address and direct contact information at 202-302-6892 is provided. But always, always check our project website for updates. Benningproject.com. Thank you for your time and attention. And I turn it back over to you, Charlotte. Thank you, Nick. So you all, we are moving into our answer um, period. So let me go over to the next slide one more time. Again, this is the Title VI form. We would love for you to provide any comments and um, that you may have too um, after the meeting this evening through that form. Um, that ensures that we capture your official comments um, as well through the Title VI process. Um, you see the QR code listed here and the link is also listed on this slide. Um, next slide, please. I think we have one more. Yep. All right. So, again, if you have a question, um, please select the three dot icon um, where you'll see the Q&A pop up and go ahead and type your question in. We do have a few questions that are already in the Q&A. Um, and please, again, send your comments to the Title VI form. Um, we did have one question, too. I know this about the presentation. And I just wanted to reiterate that the presentation will be uploaded within seven business days um, after the close of our public meeting. So we will dot com website. Um, so please actually go on to the benningproject.com website and download the presentation from there. All right. And I will turn it over to you because I think we have some questions in the queue. Thank you, Charlotte. Again, good evening, everyone. Um, how the Q&A portion will work, I will read off the questions as we receive them, uh, and then uh, I will move those questions over to Nick, and then uh, he will uh, provide the technical expertise or the uh, answers for those questions. Again, thank you for everyone for participating this evening. The first question, where can we find more detailed design documents to review and comment on? On the website, all I see is an EA document, which is no longer the most up-to-date design document. Thank you. As the um, as the final plans are reviewed and approved, um, we will post the information 
there. Um, I won't say that the entire plan set, all the detail, because this project is major and as complex as it is, will have over 2,500 documents, plan sheets. Um, but as far as the major design elements that we talked today about today, once we finalize that design, um, we will have it available uh, on on the website. Ian? Thank you, Nick. The next question. Does the utility relocation phase include any of the power supply elements for the streetcar wires and stations? It really doesn't. Um, those will come along later uh, as the contractor um, basically completes the duct banks and the feeders that will provide for streetcar. The utility relocations we are talking about are the existing distribution, communication, gas lines that are servicing the adjacent communities now. And it's just a matter of relocating them, adjusting them so that the new infrastructure uh, can be constructed, whether that's stormwater management, drainage, whether it's the new bridges and their foundations, um, as well as the new conduit runs for the upgraded streetlights. Thank you, Nick. Next question, how many car slash truck travel lanes will Benning Road have and how wide will each travel lane be? I'm going to refer that to our lead designer, Prakash, if you can. Sure. Uh, thanks, Nick. So uh, on the Banning Road uh, west of Minnesota Avenue, we have a four lane going each way. Uh, and then by the time when you march to the ramp, uh, now on an off ramp to go to DC 295, two lane each way continues on to the new replacement bridge and it continues those those lanes two lane each way all the way to east uh, capitol street the lane widths are the curb lanes are 11 foot wide that includes the one foot gutter and all of the lane in between those are 10 foot wide lane now the streetcar that runs East of Minnesota Avenue, where we do not have a median, that's where we have a 12 foot lane. Thank you, Prakash. Nick, the next question Can we see a close up design of 36th Street, currently very dangerous to cross? Um, I don't know if we can do it during these presentations. If you can contact uh, me or Mnet, um, we can work out a Teams meeting for you um, to talk to you about those details of our design. Thanks, Nick. Next question: East Capitol is set to be to also be improved with bike lanes. The bike facilities on Benny Road need to be extended all the way to East Capitol to connect the two. Can the district purchase uh, the extremely small amount of property needed to make the connection from 45th to East Capitol? We we are looking, and, and as I said, uh, trying to get a balance between property impacts and how we extend it. We are connecting to East Capitol Street. Um, we are working on finalizing that design as we as we speak. Um, given the plaza in, in the area, we have, anced, have enhanced the north side with a walkable and bike-friendly area. Um, we're now looking at how do we accommodate that uh, or tie into that on East Capitol. That is some of the final detail, details that we're currently working on. But we agree with the point of, of tying that in um, to to make sure that we have a continuous um, shared use path. Thanks, Nick. The next question has three parts. I'll read the first question. You mentioned the sidewalk will be a variable width on the north side of Benny. What is the smallest width that it will be between Kingman Island and the highway? 
Prakash, can you take that? I, I want to be sure we're accurate. Uh, yes, on the north side, we will have a, a, a six-foot-wide sidewalk uh, throughout the corridor on the north side. Thank you. Next question, will there be enough width for two people on bike or walking to, I think it's access at the same time? On the, I, I assume they mean on the sidewalk like, side? Yeah, yes, this is it's part B or part two to that uh, original question. So I'll read it again. Will there be enough width for two people on bike or walking to access at the same time? Um, the, the, the intent, the shared use path is on the south side. Um, so there would have to be a shared accommodation on the north side for the bike and um, the pedestrian usage, uh, given the six foot width. It's, it's really, the, the facility provides biking facility on the south side and continuous sidewalk is six feet on the north side. The last uh, portion, uh, part C to this uh, question is, currently you can't pass uh, it's actually a statement. It said currently you can't pass on a section of Benning Road on the north side. So that goes back to what you were saying, Nick. Next question. On Benning Road between 39th Street and East Capitol, there is a heavy residential population on Benning Road. Will DDOT show the future look of that area? The, the presenter stopped at Blaine with the future look. The, 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 the streetscape is, is pretty consistent. Um, with what we're doing as far as street trees, the green buffer between the curb and the sidewalk. Um, again, I, I would suggest you get in touch with, with us and we can set up a Teams meeting and walk you through in front of your residents um, to show exactly what the final design details will be. But it, it's, it's going to be pretty consistent from what we are showing at Blaine Avenue. Next question. I don't understand why some intersections have split platform, platforms. This seems confusing. Could you explain why they are needed? Um, you want to take that one, Prakash, please? Yeah, so in this in this case, we have a split platform because of the space availability uh, and uh, the, a left turn pockets where right. needed. And, and, and so that's why they are, they are split. Currently, they do have a left turn lane and we want to maintain that left turn lane. Thanks, Prakash. Next question. Do you have travel time estimates for a streetcar trip along the platforms? The, uh, I'm sorry, a streetcar permission of, along the corridor as designed. How does this compare with a trip by car? Uh, Adrian, can you take that one, please? Yeah, no problem. Um, so the delta that we're seeing, and this actually includes the dwell times um, for the streetcar uh, stations is two to three minutes in the a.m. and then three to four minutes in the p.m. is the delta that we're seeing. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. Um, why can you not widen the side path on the Kingman Lake Bridge? 11 feet is pretty narrow for a popular walking and biking path. Couldn't you repurpose some of the extra uh, wide driving lane space? We we are using all the space that that we can. Um, I, I know that there's currently a what is perceived to be a number of of lanes, but as the time we put by the time we put the streetcar continuing um, from Twenty Sixth Street with Kingman Lake and provide for the um, for the uh, the, share, the the path, um, we don't want to get into the recreational area of Kingman Lake. 
uh, Park, um, Kingman Park, rather. Uh, that is National Park Service land. And our effort is, was, is to utilize all the public space to get as much improvements that we can. That's what we have achieved with this design. Thank you, Nick. Next question. Is there a timeline for each phase of, of construction? More specifically, when does the Whitlock Bridge construction begin and what considerations are being made to ensure Parkside Mayfair residents can ex access their homes? That's the first well, there, part. There, there will be access to your homes throughout construction. Um, it may not be as free flowing as it is now due to the friction of construction, but we will maintain access to our movements. Now the bridge construction, that's gonna be a, a multi-level construction and, and I, I do not have a time frame. Uh, that's gonna be based on the contractor, the contractor's equipment and his ability to apply resources and efficiently build all three levels of that structure. Um, once we get a contractor on board, we will provide that information to the community. But at this point, um, all I can say is the Whitlock Bridge will be built in multi-phases. Um, we have very complex utilities attached to the bridge that will have to be maintained. We have sophisticated substructure um, being installed to support the bridge. And we have to navigate that through the underground utilities that are there. So it, it's a very complex construction effort that we anticipate. Um, and, and most I can say that the majority of the construction um, duration will be constructing the Whitlock Bridge and the new interchange configuration at DC 295 and Benning Road. But access to your communities will always be maintained. Thanks, Nick. Uh, second portion of that, will funds be directed to expand Anacostia Avenue from Foot Street to Benning as an alternative interest to the community? The alternative route is necessary not only for residential access, but medical, public safety, and public services, i.e. trash pickup. The project, um, as we've defined here, is, is the project. Um, we have done a, 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 a litany of studies um, through our traffic management plan um, and working with DDOT. Um, at this point, we, we don't see any need for additional widenings of the adjacent streets to accommodate the construction. Eminent, you can add on if, if, if I miss anything on that. No, that's, that's correct, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Emnet. The next question. What are the plans to provide bike connectivity further west on Benny Road from Oklahoma West? Prakash? Uh, yes, sure. So uh, west of Oklahoma, the, the existing bike trails are within an NPS facility, and uh, we are trying to maintain as they are. Uh, as soon as they start coming on to uh, the first uh, Kingman Island Bridge and underneath the Vomada overpass, that's when we start doing our work. So is in, uh, you know, right away in NPS properties and all of those. So west west of oklahoma is we are maintaining same as same as what is what is out there thank you prakash nick the next question i noticed in the construction phase across sections that there is no construction east of minnesota avenue during phases three and four so does that mean that the design team expects work east of minnesota avenue to be completed much earlier than the areas of west of Minnesota Avenue? Based on our um, sequence of construction, 
and and it depends on the efficiency of the utility companies we see that we can complete east of minnesota um as as the first section uh, of the overall project now again um that will depend on the contract and when the contractor comes on board in 2023 one of the first things he would have to present to us is his schedule for construction which will detail which segments which sections which bridges and all the details of how and when he would construct what so what you what we have presented here is based on our studies and planning what is feasible for construction what is 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 actual how the contractor will build a job will be dependent on his resources his ability to get materials labor and again most importantly how quickly utilities can clear the route so he can proceed with the construction efficiently part b to that nick uh expands the streetcar elements so uh, does the does this include the streetcar elements east of minnesota avenue as well being completed before west it, the, the streetcar elements as in the the ocs poles the the poles that will provide power the tracks the embedded tracks yes but please remember that before um, streetcar can proceed to revenue service to people being able to utilize it it has to go through a series of commissioning a series of tests safety tests and actually get a safety certification that basically tells um, tells us that it is safe for ridership. Thank you. We Nick. anticipate that to occur sometime in the calendar year of 2026. Thanks. Next question: Have we considered also creating a dedicated priority bus lane for X2 and X9 buses? The bus lanes would would. Any studies on, on Metro bus will be provided by WMATA. Um, they will be coordinated with, with DDOT, but that is not within the scope of our project. Um, that will be a WMATA purview. In working with WMATA, they have indicated that they are looking at schedules um, and what they would do to complement streetcar once it is completed. Thank you, Nick. Next question. For the exit from 295 South to Aiden Place, can this be moved further south to reduce traffic through River Terrace? Prakash, can you take that, please? Yes. So moving it further south, uh, I mean, uh, towards the East Capitol Street. Uh, and if you, you know, right now, if you look at those plans, those two exits are very close to each other's and that's why we want we didn't want to have east capital street traffic exiting at the same time eldon place uh, uh, the river terrace traffic uh, exiting so that's why we separated that having eldon place traffic exit out first and then east capital street thanks for yeah. there, there are requirements to separate entrances from from freeways and what Prakash is saying that uh, one of the reasons that we're moving uh, the entrance or the exit from southbound further south is to enhance the safety to move it closer to eastern um, east capitol street will will diminish that safety component um, because you you'll have two exits just too close together Thanks, Nick. The next question for the X, uh, I'm sorry. What about the circulator bus? I guess I want to know, have you taken a look at the circulator bus and their current services down the corridor or potential services down the corridor? Again, within the, the scope of the Benning Road bridges and transportation improvements, uh, our focus was on the modes that we're talked about here. Um, again, given the improvements, 
that this project presents uh, within DDOT that what, how to supplement and complement the completed streetcar system is, is being looked at. I, it's just not part of this project. Um, and then if I'm, I'm missing something on that, please jump in. Yeah. Um, during the design, this design phase, uh, we have a, a transit division who looked at the plan and uh, uh, look at the new design elements and coordinate with the bus circulation team as well. Uh, they have reviewed the 65% and uh, they're, they're uh, closely working with our team. So we have a coordination with that specific uh, division as well. I just want to add that. Thank you. Nick. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. The next question is more of a, a comment. This seems to be so bike friendly. We need more walking room. So has that been examined? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the next question. Do you have any renderings of the transit plaza at Benning Road Metro? This is a fantastic change from the previous plans, but I would love to get a better idea of landscaping, furnishings, et cetera. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Um, we, we think it's a great enhancement as well. Uh, we are currently working on uh, perspectives and renderings. And um, as we start to, again, finalize the design um, for the plaza uh, via our website, uh, we will provide renderings or perspective views of what this plaza will look like in this ultimate finished form. Thanks, Nick. Uh, a question about the 295. Uh, I travel southbound 295 during my daily work commute. I have no other option to travel to Virginia. Currently, there are significant daily traffic delays southbound during AM and PM rush. How much time will the 295 construction add to the current delays? Adrian, you want to handle that, please? Sure, Nick. Um, so we did study the travel time differences, but along DC 295, our study area was very limited because our focus was on Benning Road. Um, so most of the impacts you will see uh, for construction will be on Benning Road, not on DC 295. All closures on DC 295 are projected right now not to happen during peak hours. So hopefully, um, as far as I know right now, you won't see any impacts on DC 295 during AM or PM peak hours. And I guess, Prakash, can you confirm there's been any changes since we last spoke? Uh, that, that, is, that is correct, Adrian. Uh, we are maintaining uh, southbound uh, lanes almost everywhere except uh, in, in, uh, in the UN when we have to erect uh, the bridge beams and gutters and all of those things and the bridge demo as well as bridge replacement. On the northbound, those two lanes, uh, three lanes are getting reduced as the concurrent configuration. So, but the, those two lanes will remain open uh, majority of time, except uh, nighttime and off peak hours. Thank you. Yeah, our, our goal, and it will be a contract requirement, is to maintain two lanes on DC 295, a minimum of two lanes on DC 295 during the peak hour, especially, um, and daylight hours. Um, as mentioned, there will be a time frames during demolition of the existing bridge or erection of girders for the new bridges that we may have to, to close that uh, temporarily at night um, in order to maintain, again, the safety of not just the traveling public, but the workers as well. Thanks, uh, Nick and Adrian. I appreciate the continued work to bring safety to all users, pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers in this project. But there also needs to be a continuation of safe bike spaces from Oklahoma Avenue to Maryland Avenue. I was doored just last week on that particular part of Benny. Will this be addressed in a future project? That may be a question for MNET. Um, I is David here? I'm, I'm not sure uh, in terms of program level if there's uh, 
specific uh, project that's handling that. But definitely, we, we hear your concern and we'll, we'll share it internally within the project team and uh, we can get back to you on that specific question, uh, please. Thank you. Thanks, Emnet. The next question, is the 42nd Street stop located in front of the homes in the 42nd hundred block of Benning? Uh, how will property owners, how will property be impacted and what will the sidewalk on South Side be? So let me read that again. Is there a stop on 42nd Street located in front of the homes on the 42nd hundred block of Benning? That's question part one. And how will property be impacted part two? And what will the sidewalk on the south side be? So as far as the presentation and individual property impacts, I, I suggest we, we meet one-on-one -on -one, um, to talk about those. As far as the worst case will be, as I said, um, some type of temporary impacts that we will tie on. And then under that circumstance, all of those will be coordinated and worked out with the individual property owner. Um, Prakash or Paul, can you help me out on the stop there? Uh, yeah, so the south side, because we are we are installing the, the median stop, uh, good thing is we are widening that roadway on the north side, on the park side, as well as on the south side. So south side sidewalk is going to move further south. And, and uh, knowing the maintaining the, the pedestrian facilities, the sidewalk will be built first before we move that. When, when, when that phase of the work is done, and, and uh, the sub the pedestrian will be moved on the other side on the north side so and, and that's why we have a two separate phases we are not working on eastbound and westbound at the same time first we do the eastbound once that is done then we move on to the westbound thank you thanks Prakash. um this is more of um uh, uh, Nick, you said several times that you uh, want people to get in, feel free to get in contact with you. Um, Nick, uh, Adamo, can you provide uh, or put the contact information, the slide, the contact information slide up on the screen so folks can write that information down again? Thanks. And Nick, can you please provide your uh, email address verbally over the phone? Yeah, should I just put it in the chat? Yeah, you can put it in the, in the chat as well. And it, it may not get to everyone. Okay. R O N A L D O dot Nicholson N I C H O L S O N at Parsons P A R S O N S dot com. Ronaldo dot Nicholson at Parsons dot com. Thank you, Nick. The next question, DDOT proposes to seize some or all of the front yards as it moves through the residential zone portion of private residence statement. How does it justify violating Parking Act 1870, which according to DC Municipal Regulations Title 24 PAR 102.1, which puts it under the immediate care and keeping of the owners or occupants of the premises abutting on the public parking. Not, and this is a statement, the next part, not surprising this is being done in a predominantly African-American lower income and seniors that will be likely displaced. I know Nick, that there's kind of Russell, so I need to unpack that, that. That's, a, that's a statement. That's a statement, but there's a question uh, to it. And that question is, and, and Tina uh, may want to jump in, how does it justify violating the Parking Act of 1870, which according to DC Municipal Regulations Title 24, PAR 102.1, which puts it under the immediate care and keeping of the owners or occupants of the premises abutting on the public parking? Yeah, 
it's talking about uh uh nigga uh, surmise uh, uh, uh the understanding that or or the perceive perception that properties are being taken and not public spaces being used public parking permanently all, all i can say the project is predominantly majority being constructed within the public space in those areas that we do have property impacts that are outside we will work with the individual property owner um, in accordance with federal highway administration and ddot guidelines to address that my my response to that that question is that the project is being designed compliant with federal and District of Columbia, as well as DDOT requirements and laws. Thank you, Nick. I'll go to the next question. Related to bulb outs, the February 2020 story boards show that hard bulb outs will be made at Benning and East Capitol in an undefined concurrent project. I haven't seen in this project and haven't seen in the East Capitol Street safety and mobility project. So what project should we expect to see hard bulb outs at the intersection of East Capitol and Benning? What we're looking and working with that adjacent project now uh, in finalizing our design. Uh, that's, that's part of the reason um, that is the outstanding final design component of the overall design. Um, again, um, once we have that, it would be available uh, via the website or please get in touch with me and we can talk about your concerns. But we are coordinating with the East Capital um, Mobility Study as we speak um, to making sure that both projects are compatible and the concerns of, of both do not conflict with each other. Thanks, Nick. We have a couple more questions and we have a person on the phone uh, who doesn't have uh, access to type in a question. So let me get to these uh, quickly. The next question is, uh, will the traffic signals prioritize pedestrian access to the streetcar platforms and the streetcar and the bus traffic in any way? Adrian, can, can you handle that? Yeah, Please. no problem. Um, currently, uh, we do not have transit signal priority to make changes of the signal timing, but we will allow the minimum pedestrian time crossing for all the for all the intersections along Benning Road um, to get pedestrians to the Benning Road Metro Station. So right now we don't have transit signal priority, but we're not precluding to maybe making upgrades in the future. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks. When the pro when the projected finish time when when the projected finish time on the streetcar project at this point it should what is the projected uh uh finish time on the streetcar project at this point and would anything discontinue this project um the the project has been approved um in the plans the regional and city traffic plans um for funding, we are finalizing our plans to proceed with utility relocation and procurement for a contractor. We expect that contractor to the roadway streetcar extension bridge contractor to, and that's one contractor. This will be a bid bill job. We expect him to mobilize in 2023. Um, all of his improvements should be completed by late 2025, early 2026. So the streetcar we're projecting to go to passenger service or revenue service as we as, as we call it, after we have received the required safety certifications. And that is a rigorous process um, that includes commissioning and testing of all the life safety components of the streetcar system, how passengers will get in, get on and off. All of that is reviewed by the state safety officer. Um, once that occurs, then it will be ready for revenue service. Again, 
we are projecting now that that will occur sometime in the calendar year 2026. Thank you, Nick. At this time, turn it over to Charlotte. I think she has uh, someone on, on the call who needs to ask a question. Thanks, Ian. I'm going to check um, Molly. Um, did we still have um, Rebecca who had her hand raised? Hello. Hi, can Rebecca. Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Thank you. Yes. Um, I had questions. Um, I also had organized. I organized the seven, uh, the seven F and seven D beating um, months ago earlier in the year. Yes. However, um, I do would like to, I would like to know, have you all worked out any like a financial compensation for businesses as well as um, residents who will be having their um, portions of their uh, residency taken away uh, to extend this, extend this project? I mean, it's not project, but um, to extend um, the street, to widen the street uh, around 44th Street. Um, and as I also had a question based on the, you say guys weren't putting, um, what do you call those crosswalks around Spingon? And, and I wanted to know where they be raised, raised, um, raised crosswalks or where they just be like the regular flat crosswalks the, the the proposed crosswalks will be uh, flat with highly reflective crossing uh, on them um, at 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 the to match the existing crosswalks throughout the corridor um, okay. the new crosswalk will be the be at the crossing at Oklahoma um, okay. Re regarding um, the impacted properties, uh, we have identified those and are working to, to, to minimize or eliminate them. But those that are impacted, and as I mentioned in the presentation, where we have to acquire temporary easement rights, um, the compensation for that will be in accordance with uh, federal highway and DDOT guidelines, which requires a independent appraisal of the land and the impacts. And that appraisal is then independently reviewed again. And then an offer will be provided to the impacted property owner. Okay, if I email and you- those, And all of those are temporary impacts. There, there are no permanent um, takings or needs on this project oh so you won't be because the um because according to the meeting that we had last like the last meeting um that was something stated because you would have to widen the street if you're on 44th street there isn't much sidewalk to begin with and the streets are already on there on a narrow side so um how would you widen the streets if all of this is temporary. Prakash, could you address that at 44th Street? The 44th and Min like 44th and across like Bennett, like the Bennett Road, um, 44th and Bennett Road through uh, Minnesota and Bennett Road. Like how understand. those streets get really narrow. I understand. So, so uh, all of the widening is happening on the Benning Road, and we are transitioning back to existing roadway on all of the cross streets. Uh, so the Benning Road widening, and looking at the pu the public space available and existing right away, all of the work is permanent work is accommodated within the public space and and available right away. So we are not going outside of. The, the right of way. If con if I contact you, would you would you um, allow like do like a citizens walk through um, with you all so that we could visually because um, it's one thing for us to see it on a map, but sometimes seeing it on a map doesn't really give us a a clue because a lot of these are kind of like cartoonish pictures. Not say cartoon, they're kind of cartoonish pictures versus what we see in our daily routine life. Um, is this something possible that you all do 
or do you just kind of stay in the engineer behind the scene side? No, we, 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 we do field visits with, with property owners and we'll be happy to uh, coordinate and work with you through DDOT to have that, that type of walkthrough. And Ms. Rebecca, you already have Charlotte Duxworth's contact information when she uh, helped set up the ANC uh, meeting before. So just send her an email and uh, we can help coordinate that uh, at a later uh, date. All the other property owners that will have temporary um, impacts have, all, uh, have already been notified as well in this process. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Okay. Well, we are a little bit over time. Um, we have a couple of other questions that we will follow up with via email, um, but we did get through the majority of the questions. So thank you all. Thank you for your participation as well. Um, again, we'd like for you to send your comments to the title, through the Title VI form that will come up right after you close out of this meeting. Um, the QR code is also listed here and as well as the link as well. So thank you all again so much for attending um, the public meeting. Um, there, as Nick mentioned, there will be continual follow-up as we continue to go um, through this 100% design phase onto construction. So thank you so much. Um, and we look forward to continued dialogue with the community. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.